On July 25, 1995, Michael Jackson revealed that he would be participating in a television special called Michael Jackson One Night Only, an intimate concert to be filmed at New York's Beacon Theater on the 8th and 9th of December before being exclusively aired on HBO on December 10th. He couldn't have been more passionate about it. Jackson's then-manager Jim Mori tells about his clients' enthusiasm for the concerts. The show was ultimately canceled just days before the scheduled broadcast, with Jackson having to be rushed to the hospital during rehearsals on December 6th. The cancellation of the concert raised many questions and to this day fans continue to wonder about the show that never happened. Michael planned something he had never done before. This HBO special was going to be unprecedented. Everything was controlled by Michael and his people. This would have been yet another mountain Michael would have climbed and something no other entertainer accomplished. Jackson, whose history album had come out just six weeks prior to the announcement, approached his longtime friend, veteran director, and executive producer, Jeff Margolis, to help him stage the event. Instead of one of these giant arenas, Michael wanted to try and do something more intimate and make him more touchable to his fans and to the American public. So he came up with this idea and came to me and said, I want it to be intimate. How would you do it? And that's how it came about. We chose the Beacon Theater in New York City. It's a beautiful old Art Deco theater and we wanted its intimacy so that Michael could feel closer to the fans. Michael wanted to perform a mixture of his old hits and the new material from his new album. Kenny Ortega, who worked with Michael on the Dangerous Tour, was hired to supervise all the choreographers as he had a good relationship with both Michael and the producer Jeff Margolis. Each of the several choreographers hired had two to three numbers to work on to give each song a different feel. Dance rehearsals for the special were held at Sony Studios in New York City with up to 100 working dancers coming in and out of the building to rehearse their particular pieces. Brad Buxer, responsible for the music and the arrangements, was rehearsing somewhere else because he was using a symphony orchestra and they needed more space. One of the numbers that Michael was diligently learning and rehearsing was Barry Lather's brand new interpretation of Thriller. For Thriller, I was thinking an industrial punk slash rock vibe with a slight spy undertone, recalls Lather, who had previously worked with Jackson in 1986 as a dancer in Captain EO. We had 20 dancers in trench coats, hats, and flashlight props. It was extremely specific, edgy, and raw. I was trying to present Thriller in a new way, which was a challenge. He learned the choreography when no one else was in the room. I was amazed how Michael learned by watching and soaking the choreography up visually. In fact, Jackson loved the new thriller routine so much that he repurposed a number of Lather's steps in his 1996 film, Ghosts. The most publicized number to take place during the one-night-only concerts was Jackson's rendition of Childhood, featuring a special guest appearance by legendary French mime, Marcel Marceau. He was someone who did not do any guest appearances. After the difficult contract negotiations with his manager, Marceau was flown to the United States to begin working with Jackson. I was greeted by Michael Jackson in great shape. He was happy to have me and we started working immediately, recalled Marceau. The idea for the set was for the stage to be pitch black, Michael standing singing the song in one pool of light and Marcel miming to the lyrics in another. Despite the fact that the HBO special was promoted as an intimate event, Michael and his team were toying with the idea of a spectacular special effects entry to the stage. Similarly to the way he kicked off each history tour concert less than a year later, Jackson was interested in a virtual video intro in which he found himself flying to the venue for the performance, with the video transitioning into to his in-the-flesh appearance on stage. It would have been as if Michael had jet-packed out of a stadium someplace over the city and found himself at this lovely little theater in downtown New York to do a show. As the December filming dates drew closer and closer, it was becoming clear that while some of the new numbers like Thriller were ready to go, others were not. In the end, a number of the new routines including Smith and Payne's new rendition of Dangerous would not be included in the show. I kept getting the feeling that he either felt overwhelmed or unsure about some of the numbers, recall Smith. We were going really slowly because we wanted it to be as good as it could be, but we didn't have our normal amount of time to prepare. So Michael said, you know what? We're gonna do the old dangerous. Most of the dancers knew it and we taught the ones that didn't. 
It was gonna be the classic Michael Jackson dangerous because he just loved it and he knew it like the back of his hand. There were four days of rehearsals on the stage in the Beacon Theater. Michael wasn't there the first day as it was mostly a dance rehearsal for the dancers to find their spacing on the stage. Michael came in and rehearsed the second, third, and the fourth day. Just before 5 p.m. on December 6th, during the second of several planned full-day dress rehearsals and just two days after he and Marcel Marceau promoted the HBO special, Jackson suddenly collapsed on stage. Michael Jackson remains hospitalized after collapsing on stage Tuesday, forcing the postponement of his upcoming televised concert. Michael Jackson is still in intensive care at a New York hospital where he was taken after he collapsed on stage on Wednesday evening with problems affecting his heart, kidneys and liver. Jackson's sister Janet, his mother Catherine and wife Lisa Marie Presley have all visited him at his bedside. Doctors said the singer's collapse was possibly due to an irregular heartbeat with dehydration. He had shock. He had a uh, cardiac rhythm that, if not corrected with volume, would have warranted uh, shocking the chest. And we were fortunate in that we uh, were able, with the assistance of the EMS team and the uh, emergency uh, uh, team here at Beth Israel, to rapidly uh, replace his fluids and restore uh, an adequate blood pressure. We were all standing on stage. I saw him walk to the front of the stage and go down, hitting his face on the grating. He had both hands by his side with the microphone in one and fell face first onto the metal grate, recalls Michael Prince, one of the show's sound engineers. He didn't even put his hands out to break his fall. It was scary. And he fell down hard. I'm surprised he didn't break his nose or his jaw. We were all petrified. There were people around him. He did not move at all. Paramedics arrived and when I saw the stage, I was very scared. His bodyguards rushed over and formed a protective circle around him, holding their jackets up to give him some privacy, recalls Prince. Someone yelled for an ambulance and within minutes, one arrived. He was breathing but definitely not responding. I thought maybe he'd had a heart attack. I must say that the 911 responders, even with the traffic in that city, got to the Beacon Theater in less than five minutes. It was incredible. As Michael was rushed to the hospital, a meeting was called in the lobby at the Beacon Theater. It seemed that probably this whole show was going to be cancelled or delayed somehow, recalls Lather. Jackson was scheduled to attend the 1995 Billboard Music Awards at the New York Coliseum that evening, where he was to receive the special Hot 100 Award for his outstanding chart achievements. Jackson's sister, recording artist Janet Jackson, was also a bedside guest. She and her brother were supposed to appear live on last night's Billboard Music Awards show, but had to cancel. At the show, fellow musicians wished him well. We love you, Michael. We hope you get better because yeah. we understand stress. We do. In the music industry. The best uh, get well soon wishes because, I mean, how long can we do without the king of pop? So get well, Michael. Michael Jackson, if you're watching this, we love you. We're praying for you tonight. We get up there and we stand by our instruments and we play them. And, you know, Michael just does this thing that we can't fathom. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and he works so hard and it's like, you know, I just, you know, just get better and get out there because I got to see the whole show. And Michael Jackson's show, the one that he was supposed to tape Friday and Saturday and present on HBO Sunday, as we reported at the top of the show, has been postponed. No word on whether or when that will be rescheduled. The one night only cast continued to run numbers at the Beacon Theater that evening and the next day as Jackson awaited the arrival of his personal physician, Dr. Alan Metzger who was flying to New York from Los Angeles to assess the superstar. Meanwhile, the public had caught wind of Jackson's situation and began to gather outside the hospital to show their support for the superstar. I hope he's well. I hope he's getting better. You know, you're just here for, like, support, and we just want him to get better and look after himself and rest. We don't care about the concert, whatever. His health is more important than anything else. I want you to know, Michael, we wish you the best of health, and you got everybody in the Bahamas praying for you 100%. We love you. I feel good because I know that I've seen him, and I know I accomplished my goal in my life. You're not out alone. Jackson remained hospitalized and under strict medical care throughout the planned December 8th and 9th taping nights and beyond HBO's December 10th broadcast date, resulting in the cancellation of the whole thing. Without a doubt, the HBO special would have been a very big boost to sales right the way through to Christmas, said Vice President of Marketing at HMV, 
Once the cancellation had been confirmed, attention was turned towards whether or not the show would be rescheduled at a later date. Everything was finished. It was a done deal. And for some reason it just never happened. I guess when HBO and everybody said one night only, they weren't kidding. Recalls the show's producer. The lack of rescheduling was most likely a combination of Michael's hesitance to return to the concept and the HBO having an insurance on the shows. Once the show became an insurance claim, the whole concept just went away. Michael Jackson was released from hospital yesterday. Fans have been waiting for days outside the hospital for this moment. Jackson's doctors say he'll now have to rest for weeks before performing again. But this, however, does not upset the hardcore fans. Of course I want to see him sing, and, but main priority is his health. So I think that's what they're worried about at the moment and not the music. Years later, when Michael was asked about the cancelled shows and whether he would ever do them, he said, no, I don't think so. I worked so much to prepare the show, there was such a pressure, people pushing me to do this show no matter what. Then, finally, the nature took its course and said, stop. She decided I shouldn't do that show. Although Jackson never agreed to revisit the show, there is a small glimmer of hope that fans will see it one day. Rehearsals for one night only were, as has long been speculated, captured on tape. But, there's a problem. The tapes have vanished, says Margolis. They've disappeared. Michael ended up with all of the tapes. That was part of his agreement. HBO has nothing. His management company has nothing. His lawyers have nothing. I have nothing. Nobody had anything except for Michael, and needless to say, they disappeared years ago. When they cleaned out Neverland, I'm sure that somewhere on that estate he had a library that had every single piece of footage and every single audio tape that anybody ever gave him that fell into the Michael Jackson black hole. Had the special gone on the air, the viewer would have seen things they'd never seen before, says Michael's then-agent, Maury. There would have been things that would have been talked about the world over, from the water cooler or coffee station in every office to the dinner table in every home. 